Thanks for joining us today. I'm Cody Holmyung. This is our final broadcast before the election. In just two days, voters in Kansas and Missouri are going to be making some major decisions that could shape the future and will shape the balance of power in Washington. Take the U.S. Senate, for example, which is evenly split right now when you count independent senators caucusing with Democrats. 35 seats are up for grabs on Tuesday. 12 Democratic held seats, 23 Republican held seats. Polling site 538 considers this election a toss up when it comes to who controls the Senate in January. In Missouri's U.S. Senate race, Republican State Attorney General Eric Schmidt still holds a double digit lead over Democratic challenger Trudy Bush Valentine in the latest Emerson College poll. Both candidates want to take over for outgoing Senator Roy Blunt, who's retiring at the end of the session. We have a lot to get to, but we will start today by profiling both candidates to make sure you're ready to go to the polls. We begin with Democrat Trudy Bush Valentine. We've got to do a lot of things to keep inflation down, keep food on people's table, and keep gas in their cars. The Democratic nominee for U.S. Senate has been busy crisscrossing the state in the run-up to Election Day, talking to voters about the economy and how to right the ship, among a number of issues. She is well known around St. Louis, where she grew up, went to school, and worked as a nurse. She, of course, is an heiress to a share of the Bush family beer fortune, and this is her first time running for political office. Please welcome back to the broadcast, Trudy Bush Valentine. Thank you so much for speaking with us today in this home stretch of your campaign. Uh, you touched on this a second ago. Inflation is bad. Groceries and gas, very pricey. Nationally, though your party is the party in power. So how do you write this ship and convince voters that electing a Democrat is a good choice right now? You know, inflation is a global issue and everyone's having trouble with inflation. Again, we've come out of COVID supply chain issues and a war in Ukraine that is still going on. I know we need to get the cost of basic necessities down and I will stand up to big pharma, big insurance, big oil companies. What I hear mostly about when I'm out through Missouri is the cost of, of drug prescription drugs and the cost of insulin, which the Republicans have the ability to cap at $35 a month, and they did not do that. I hear about uh, prescription prices all the time, people that have to pay $825 for a prescription that they need every month, people whose wives are having kidney problems and the, the husband is having his own problems and needs drugs that cost well into the hundreds of dollars. We have to get those prescription costs down. People cannot be, be choosing between groceries and between uh, insulin. I will do everything I can to get the cost down. We need to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. I know that might be harder for small businesses, but they can raise it over time. We need equal pay for equal work. We need more good union jobs where there's good pay, good benefits. We need more manufacturing and we need more businesses. You know, parents ask me this a lot, especially following the tragedy that we recently saw in St. Louis with the high school shooting. Uh, what are some real actionable steps that you and Congress could make to try and prevent this sort of thing from happening again? You know, we have to do everything we can to get military assault rifles off the street. And no one under the age of 21 should be buying a long gun or a pistol. It's a federal law that no one can buy a pistol until they're 21 years old. And we have not taken that law in our own state. But no one under 21 should buy a long gun or a pistol. And we've got to do more about mental health. So many of these shootings are happening because people are struggling with mental health. We have to be able to start figuring out who these people are, getting them the help that we need. We have to start just looking around and seeing where people are and how we can help them. Realistically, do you think an assault weapons ban would ever pass through Congress, would ever make it through the Senate? You know, I'm for the Second Amendment. I know there are a lot of hunters out there that are responsible gun owners and people that want to shoot for sport. I come from a family of, of hunters and my kids all hunt. I, I don't think military assault rifles are what we need on the streets at all. I, I personally don't think that we need them, period. But there are a lot of hunters and sports people that are responsible with those kind of guns. So we really have to think about this much more. But absolutely, no one under 21 should be able to buy a gun like that. And we have to always do background checks. 
We have to check for red flags. We have to do everything we can to make sure whoever gets a gun is responsible as a gun owner. Republicans have tried to paint you as soft on public safety. Would you support more funding for police and public safety? You know, that's again my opponent. And and uh, and I just got to say, as far as my opponent, you know, he's getting down on me for whatever he thinks I said, which is absolutely not what I said. He's also down on me for the cost of basic necessities and inflation. He has no plan for how we deal with inflation and the cost of, of basic necessities. And in this thing with the police, never in my life have I said we need to defend the, defund the police. We need to fund the police with more resources and more tools and more education so they can keep all of us safe. We need a good, strong police force. The police force the other, other day at our school shooting in the city of St. Louis were incredible. They came into the building, they were there on time. They stopped so many lives from being killed. We lost a 16 year old young woman student and we lost a teacher who covered her, the student's bodies with her body in order to protect them protect your students. They were all heroes, the teacher, the students that got through this, and the policemen that saved so many lives, police officers. You know, the last time you were here on our broadcast, you said that you'd be happy, that was the word you used, to debate your Republican opponent. We haven't seen that. We know that you did attend a debate in September with other candidates. Eric Schmidt didn't show up. But there's been nothing on the books for a one-on-one -on -one debate. Is that a disservice to voters, do you think? You know, we tried to debate with Eric Schmidt with, with everything we could. We we also said we would do another debate with him at a forum with some people present to also ask questions. The only debate that Eric Schmidt would have with me was on a Fox uh, news station with just the two of us debating and not having the other two opponents that were also running be in the debate. All right. Well, we appreciate you coming on our broadcast and, and letting your platform be known. Trudy Bush Valentine, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, Cody. Good talking to you.